So in the last video on orthogonal trajectories, I used this construction in GeoGebra where I've got the family members of this B family, which are circles drawn in blue, and the family members of the A family, which are also circles drawn in red. And I've put little sliders on here, which allows me to run through various different members of the family. So changing this parameter, in this case, changing the parameter A, and in the other case, changing the parameter B. Uh, so I thought it'd be nice if I just went ahead and showed you how you can construct one of these things in GeoGebra. So here I'm going to go to File, uh, new, new Window, and I'll just bring up a new window here. And I'll just lay it over top of the other window. Okay. So most of the work is going to be done here, down here in the input bar. Um, rather than bury the input bar down on the bottom, maybe I'll just bring it up. So I'm going to just change the view for a second here. And input bar, rather than keep it at the bottom, I'll just move it to the top so that you don't have to keep looking down at the bottom of the page. You can stare mostly at the top, which has uh, got a little bit more of a buffer between the top of the video and where the input bar is. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw some circles. So we'll plot a circle. So x squared plus y squared. And we want to make this maybe our a family. So this is going to be equal to a times x. So I'm using a little asterisk there for the times. And when I hit enter, it's going to prompt me to say, wait, wait a minute, you're using variables x and y, which I understand. But there's this variable a that I don't know what to do with. What do you want to do with it? Um, in this particular version of GeoGebra, I'm using a version 4 here just because it's on the machine that I do the recordings on and I don't have um, the upgrade on this machine. But on my other machine, I have GeoGebra 5. And what it'll do is it'll ask you if you want to create a slider. So yours might say, do you want to create a slider? Say, OK. Mine says, well, I don't like that at all, so I'm not going to do anything. So what I will do instead is I will get rid of that line. I'm going to copy it just so I don't have to type it in again. And I'm going to write a is equal to 1. So what I'm doing is I'm telling it what I want a to be. So it made a a number. Now I want a to change. So what I can do is I can click on the little circle next to a, and it will show a as a slider. And now once a is shown as a slider, I can now move it around. And so now I've told it what a is, and it's given me the ability to change that variable a. So if I go to Object Properties, and I look at the slider, there's some min, max values for the slider and how it can increment through it, and also what the width in terms of the number of pixels um, to display the length of that slider on the screen. Uh, telling it, you know, display it horizontally. If I display it vertically, well, it just sort of popped off the screen. I can display it horizontally. I can increase this number if I think it's too short. So I'm going to maybe take it up to negative 10 to 10. You can go any number you want. And I'm going to hit Enter, and I'll get rid of this. Now, when I go ahead and type that formula in for the circle, it's happy with it. It's like, OK, I know what A is. And you can see it drew the circle there. And you can see, as I change A, I get all those different versions of the circle, up to our maximum value of 10. Now what I want to do is I want to change the circle. Now, this isn't necessary, but I'd like to change the color. Maybe make it red, go to style, bump it up so it's a little bit thicker. You have options for whether you want it to be dotted, uh, or dashed, or dotted, or, or solid. So I'm going to pick solid, and then I'll close it. There's some other options. I should have actually shown the other options as well. Under basic, we can tell it to either show a label, Showed the label C, that's what it called it. In memory, it stored the circle stored as variable C. We could ask it to do the name and value, in which case it shows the equation. I'm just going to leave the label off entirely. You can add your own label if you wanted just by putting a text box down. So clicking the text menu, dropping a text box, and then going x squared plus y squared equals a times x. Oops, I forgot the square on the Y. And it shows you the preview of how it'll appear on screen. And you may look at this saying, well, I don't like those little carrots. I want it 
to actually put the 2 as a superscript on the y and on the x. Well, you can get that by ticking the box next to LaTeX formula. And it'll display it now with some nice mathematical fonts. And so there it is. You can right click and hit Get Properties, change the color to match the curve, the color of the curve that it represents, go to the text menu, maybe make it medium or large in terms of display, click OK to apply it, and then close the window, and then we can just drag it around wherever we want. And then we just repeat the process now for that B family member. So B is equal to 1. I'll go ahead and show it. I can either click the circle or I can right click and say show object. And then I'll set, put the settings the same as they were for the other one. Uh, under slider, it's going to go from negative 10 to 10. Uh, width horizontal, looks all good. And now we'll plot the curve. So I'm just going to Go for memory for the other one and change that last part to b times y. And now it's plotted the other one. And as I change the b value, I get all the different curves in that family. I'm going to make these ones blue. So I right click on the object again, get properties. Uh, I'm going to change it to blue. Maybe I'll make the style a little bit thicker again. And that's good. And I'll add the text as well. So this is B times Y. Make it look pretty by using LaTeX. Oh, and I'll get rid of the asterisk. It doesn't need it there because this is just making it uh, look pretty on the screen. It's not actually doing any calculations with this uh, expression I put in here. Now I can right click, get properties, go to text, make it, I think I made the other one large color, I'll make it blue, and there we go. So we've got our two curves drawn, and we can change the parameter to get all the different members of the family. Now the last thing that Applet had was intersection points and the tangents at the intersection points. So there's a couple ways to get the intersection points. One of the nice ways to do it is to just click the new point button and hover over the curve. And if you click on it, you'll drop a new point on it. I want a new point to be attached to both of them, so I'll hover over their intersection. And you can see this, the size of the curve just change a little bit. It means it's being selected. So as long as I hover over both, I'm on the blue one now, and now I'm on the red one. And so if I click, it's going to attach a point to both. And now, when I move, the point moves along with it. It's the intersection point. There's another intersection point, which is at the origin, so I'll hover over the place at the origin as well and click on that. And there we go. Now I've got my two intersection points, and you can see them listed here in the objects pane. The other way to do this would be to, under the new point, if I click the little drop down menu, and there's an intersection of two objects, if I selected that, then if I clicked on one object and then clicked on the other object, it would automatically create both of those points at the same time. Uh, I like, you know, either one's fine. I just like usually to use the, the new point button so that I can select each point individually. Now that we've got those points selected, we can construct tangent lines at them. Now I want to construct the tangent line at the point A to, let's say, the curve corresponding to family member A. Well, one of the things I maybe should do to make this easier to remember is I'm going to right click on the red curve, go to Object Properties. That's my A family. Right now it's being called C. Maybe I'll call it A fam or something like that. And then for D curve, I want that to be my B family. So maybe I'll call it B fam. So now when I go ahead and construct the tangent line, I'm going to start typing tangent. And GeoGebra has this autocomplete where if it recognizes what you're trying to say, it gives you some options. So notice it, I started, cap, I started typing with a lowercase t, and it's telling me, well, you should use uppercase. And what do you want? Do you want the tangent to the point of a conic or the point on a function? 
or the point on a curve and the curve. And that's the one I want. I want the tangent at a point on the curve to the curve itself. So I click that. And now it allows me to change those placeholders. So the point, I want it to be at point A. What is the curve? I want it to be the AFAM. And I hit enter. And now it's plotted the point. It's also added a new object over here. And as I change, oops, I'm st I've still got the point tool selected. I went to drag the slider, but it created this point C. I can just undo that. Um, undo on your keyboard. For me, it's an apple, so it's apple Z. Gets rid of it. Uh, you could probably go to edit undo, and it would undo it as well. It also tells you what your shortcut is. So I should switch to the pointer tool to now move the slider. And you can see the tangent line goes along with it. We'll do the exact same thing to the other curve. Tangent, point on curve, to A, to the B family member, and there we go. And now as I drag, it goes along with them. And at this stage you can change these to dotted lines like I did. You can change the color just by going right click object properties, and you know, change a color, change your style, thicken them up, make them a different style of line. Uh, you can make it all as pretty as you like. Uh, if you want to verify that they actually are right angles to each other, there's also an angle tool here. And for the angle tool, we can just click on it. I can click on one line, click on the other line, and you can see that they are right angles to each other. So I'm going to get rid of the angle. I don't, well, maybe I should do one more thing. We can see that it didn't matter where we were. They're always right angles to each other. Whatever family member I choose from one and family member from the other, they always intersect at right angles. You could do the same thing, construct tangent lines at the origin, um, and see that they're right angles there as well. I hope that was of interest to you. So now you can go ahead and start having some fun doing your own constructions in GeoGebra. All right, thanks very much for watching.